far as children are concerned, is never, never, never let them near your television set. Or better still, just don't install the idiotic thing at all. In almost every house we've been, we've watched them gaping at the screen. They loll and slop and lounge about and stare until their eyes pop out. Last week in someone's place we saw a dozen eyeballs on the floor. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they're hypnotised by it. Until they're absolutely drunk with all that shocking ghastly junk. Oh yes, we know it keeps them still. They don't climb out the window sill. They never fight or kick or punch. They leave you free to cook the lunch and wash the dishes in the sink. But did you ever stop to think, to wonder just exactly what this does to your beloved tot? It rots the sense in the head, it kills imagination dead, it clocks and clutters up the mind, it makes a child so dull and blind he can no longer understand the fantasy of fairyland. His brain becomes as soft as cheese, his powers of thinking rust and freeze, he cannot think, he only sees. Alright you'll cry, alright you'll say, but if we take the set away, what shall we do to entertain our darling children? Please explain. We'll answer this by asking you, what used the darling ones to do? How used they keep themselves consented before this monster was invented? Have you forgotten? Don't you know? We'll say it very loud and slow. They used to read. They'd read and read and read and read and then proceed to read some more. Great Scott Gadzooks, one half their lives was reading books. The nursery shelves held books galore, books cluttered up the nursery floor. And in the bedroom by the bed, more books were waiting to be read. Oh books, oh books, what they used to know, those children living long ago. So please, oh please, we beg, we pray, go throw your TV set away. And in its place you can install a lovely bookshelf on the wall. Then fill the shelves with lots of books, ignoring all the dirty looks, the screams and yells, the bites and kicks, and the children hitting you with sticks. Fear not, because we promise you that in about a week or two of having nothing else to do, they'll now begin to feel the need of having something to read. And once they start, oh boy, oh boy, you'll watch the slowly growing joy that fills their hearts. They'll grow so keen, they'll wonder what they'd ever seen in that ridiculous machine, that nauseating, foul, unclean, repulsive television screen.